All right, so I am going to do an example of how to use the mean value theorem to get at a certain value. So there's a lot of information that we have to know before that uh, before we can attack this problem. Our problem is the initial function we're given is f of x equals x over x minus one. Well, we're doing this over the interval for ten. So this is our a and our b in this function, the mean value theorem function, which is f of b minus f of a over b of a, with these being the a and b that I just talked about. Now because this is a rational function, we're going to have to take the derivative of it because that's the second step of uh, using the mean value theorem. The first step is to plug a and b into the mean value theorem formula. So we keep this original equation. We just use f of x for this first step. And not to do anything to it, we just plug in these values as the MVT prescribes in that, me in, in that method, right? The second thing we do is the, we then take f prime of x and we set it equal to the answer that we got from using the mean value theorem on f of x. So f of x put into the mean value theorem, gives us a value, we set that value equal to the derivative of the original equation. So our original equation, as we said, is f of x equals x over x minus 1. So let's go ahead and plug things into the mean value theorem for this equation. So the denominator, b minus a, is easy enough. Our b is 10, our a is 4. So this is just 10 minus 4. On the top, things are going to get a little trickier, but it's going to look a whole lot worse than it actually is. We're going to have a quantity minus, a qu minus another quantity. Each quantity is a fraction. Now go ahead and just write in parentheses for all of your variables instead of trying to fill them in uh, because that will, uh, it won't save you time, but it will prevent mistakes. So we have x over x minus 1. x over x minus 1. And now let's change colors here for emphasis. F of b, so this is our f of b right here. Our b is 10, so every time, everywhere you see an x, we're going to put in 10. So 10 over 10 minus 1, and then minus f of a, so everywhere you see an x, you put in an a, which a is 4, so we put in a 4. 4 over 4 minus 1. All right, so this. Denominator, once again, is pretty easy. 10 minus 4 is just 6. We still have our two fractions that we are taking the difference of. So we have 10 over 10 minus 1, which is just 10 over 9. We have uh, minus 4 over 4 minus 1. 4, 4 minus 1 is 3. So, once again, not hard at all. Our denominator of 6. And here's what we need to do. In order to subtract these things, we need to give them a common denominator. So let's multiply both of this side of this fraction, both of the numerator and the denominator, by 3. Why? Because 3 times 3 equals 9. So if we do that, we can have a common denominator. So this over here will stay as 10 ninths minus 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 3 is 12. I'm going to lie, I wrote 3 when I said 9. 12 ninths. So we have 10 ninths over 12 ninths. So all of this, once again, continuing to keep our denominator, is negative 2 ninths over 6. And we need to kill this 9 on the bottom because fractions within fractions are just miserable. So let's multiply by 9. All right, what do we get? 9 times 9, this is, uh, we get rid of the bottom because we're multiplying by it. 9 times negative 2 is negative 18. 6 times 9 is 54. We get 18 over 54. And now we can reduce this fraction even more. Negative 18 over 54, negative 18 divided by 2 is negative 9. 54 divided by 2 is 27. So we have negative 9 over 27. And we can divide this, uh, we can simplify this even further and say uh, divide each of these by 3 and get negative 3 over 9. Okay? And negative 3 over 9 is going to, well, if we can divide each of these by 3. All right. 
So I know I'm doing every single step here that we might be able to just do in our heads, but I want to outline everything and make it as explicit as possible um, for anyone that's struggling trying to follow along with this. So we can divide each of these by three, we get negative one third. So now that is, that's a pretty clean, nice, acceptable value, right? Negative one third. So we've done step one. Step one is taken care of. We've plugged A and B into the MVT formula, and we came out with negative one third. So let's, let's write this over here again. And just keep it tucked away, because now we have new work to do. The next step, as we talked about earlier, is we're going to take f prime, or we're going to take the derivative, the first derivative, of the function that we were supplied. So that's going to require the quotient rule. The quotient rule isn't always necessary, but it's necessary for this because we're taking the derivative of a rational function, which by definition is a function that is a quotient. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this function. We have x over x minus 1 prime. So let's put this into the quotient rule formula, which says that f over g prime is g f prime minus f g prime over g squared. Well, g squared is pretty easy, right? We have x minus 1 squared. And then uh, g is this. Let's go ahead and write that. This is f. This is g, okay, when we're talking about these things. So this is our g squared right here. And now we have g x minus 1 times f prime x prime minus f, which is x times g prime, which is x minus 1 prime, okay, g f prime f g prime. Now, let's speed things up a little bit here. x minus 1 times x prime. x prime is just 1, so we don't need to do anything to it because it's times 1, which doesn't matter. So we have x minus 1 minus x times x minus 1 prime. This is just a difference, so it's x prime minus 1 prime. The prime of any constant is 0, so this 1 ceases to matter. Now we have x prime. x prime is just 1, so x times 1. So this is just x. So uh, we have that on the bottom, and then we still just have our x minus 1 squared on the bottom. So we have x minus 1 minus x over x minus 1 squared. x minus x is just 0. So what we end up with is negative 1 over x minus 1 squared. So this is f prime of x of this original function. Okay. Now, we have this value. These are the two important values. So we'll write this over here as well. We have negative 1 over x minus 1 squared. The squared is in the wrong part there. There's where the squared should be. Great. So now we have both of these values. We can erase all of this work. And the only step left is, well, I guess it should have been called step 3, but I just made it part of step 2, is to set these two things equal, f prime of x and what we got from the mean value theorem formula. So we set these two things equal to one another. So we have negative one-third equals negative one over x minus one squared. So we needed to set these two uh, expressions equal to zero. All right, not a big deal. It looks horrible, but it's really not that bad. You notice they both have a numerator of 1. So right now, for all practical purposes, we can just ignore it. Pretend like it doesn't exist. However, we cannot, we must be very careful not to neglect the negative sign when we uh, just pull out these bits right here. So what we've turned this into now is negative 3 
is equal to negative x minus 1 squared. All right, so what do we do here? Let's multiply both sides by negative 1. And that is a nice little trick which allows this to just turn positive. So now we have 3 equals x minus 1 squared, both positive. Now, why do we do that? Well, when we take the square root, which is the next step, we can't be taking the square root of a negative number because the square root of uh, 3 is just radical 3, but the square root of negative 3 is radical 3i, which we don't want complex numbers right now. So we have 3 equals uh, x minus 1 squared. Let's go ahead and put a radical on each side and take the square root. So now we have that radical 3 equals x minus 1. So we can uh, pull 1 to the other side. So x equals, uh, let's, let's add a 1 over here, add a 1 over here, x equals radical 3 plus 1. And uh, also because this is squared, it's a radical, x equals 1 minus radical 3. So to write this in a more attractive way, we have that x equals 1 plus radical 3, and x equals 1 minus radical 3. So that's it. We're finally there. <laughs> There's a lot of work, but this is what the mean value theorem gives us for the function f of x equals x over x minus 1. Ta-da!